A serial killer would be done in by one of his would-be victims. Hello, true crimeers. This is the case of the Missoula Mauler. Viewer discretion is advised. It was the late evening hours on September 3rd, 1986 in Missoula, Montana. Doug Wells, who was the owner of a local company, the Wells Furniture Company, well, he thought he spotted someone in the bushes outside of his home. And when he goes out there with a flashlight, he notices it's one of his employees, a man named Wayne Nance. Wayne kind of panics and says, uh, I thought I, I was driving by and I, I saw someone in, in looking into your house. And so, uh, uh, and, and, Doug Wells is like, what the, f what? No, you were creeping on my, my house, weren't you? Doug Wells turns around for just a moment and all of a sudden Wayne Nance, who had a gun with him, pistol whipped Doug over the head. He then forces Doug inside the house, points a gun at Doug's wife, Chris, Chris Wells, and forces her to tie Doug up. Then when she was done doing that, Wayne Nance tied Chris up and he then took Doug Wells and brought him down, dragged him down to the basement where he took a knife and he thrust it into the chest of Doug Wells. Wayne Nance thought that he had pierced his heart and that he would be dead within moments. So he goes upstairs where he then takes Chris Wells and he rapes her in the bedroom. In the middle of him attacking Chris, down in the basement, Doug Wells is still alive. And that's because Wayne missed his heart by about an inch. And obviously he's in pain and he's losing blood, but he manages to get himself up and free himself of the ropes. He then grabs his rifle in the basement and he immediately bolts upstairs. He goes into the bedroom where Wayne is attacking Doug's wife and Doug takes a rifle and shoots Wayne in his side. Wayne collapses to the ground and Doug Wells basically at that point says he was just in such a state of, of shock and anger and he wanted to protect his wife that he just continued to bash in the head of Wayne Nance. He bashed Wayne Nance's skull in and killed him. What Doug did not know was that he ended the reign of a horrific serial killer there in Missoula that police had been referring to as the Missoula Mauler. Because police would take DNA from Wayne Nance's deceased body because they were curious to know if perhaps he had committed any other similar crimes that he had just attempted to commit here. Sure enough, he did. They had been able to link Wayne Nance to at least six murdered victims, and, and some of them have been rape victims as well. Wayne Nance was born in October of 1955 in Clinton, Montana. He grew up in a relatively decent household. I mean, they, they lived in a mobile home, but his parents were good parents. And Wayne, by all accounts, was a good student in school. He got good grades. He was academically, he was, he was very good. And he had a bright future ahead of him if he wasn't a troublemaker, which is he got into a lot of trouble when he was younger. He became a juvenile delinquent, basically. As a teenager going into his early 20s, Wayne would brag about being involved in devil worshiping and how much he loved the devil and it kind of freaked a lot of people out. He was even telling kids in school, like, I really want to commit a murder. Like, that's kind of a gigantic red flag, but hey, who am I? On April 11th, 1974, in West Riverside, Montana, a woman was found murdered inside of her home. That woman was 39-year-old Donna Lorraine Pounds. Donna Pounds was the wife of a deacon. The deacon was named Harvey Pounds. Donna was killed and raped inside the house while she was there alone because her husband was at the church at the time of her murder. They would later determine that the killer had snuck into the house. It was not forced entry. He then retrieved a 22 caliber weapon that was inside the home and the killer seemed to know exactly where it was. Then the killer tied Donna up, raped her, and then shot and killed her. The killer dragged her to the basement where he shot her five times in her head. There was a witness who said they saw Wayne Nance actually around the house at the time the murder would have happened. This wasn't unusual, at least back then, because Wayne Nance knew 
the pounds and he was friends and acquaintances with them. He had been to their house before. And when police questioned him, he didn't come off as like being responsible for this. And so they basically just let him go. As a matter of fact, it was Harvey Pounds, the deacon, the husband to the victim, who was treated more as a suspect than anyone else. But eventually he was cleared. It wouldn't be until after Wayne Nance's own death that they searched his home and they found evidence of like these hand-drawn maps of people's homes. For example, like they found maps of the uh, Pound's house. They also found that his bed was covered in rubber sheets, which was super unusual, but it they found evidence kind of in his home where he lived at with his dad at the time of his death that linked him to these other murders. But DNA would also eventually link him to the murder of Donna Pounds. Five years after Donna Pounds' murder, another victim, a 15-year-old girl who was unidentified at the time, she was found murdered. This was at Beaver Tail Hill State Park in Montana. Because they didn't know who she was, they just nicknamed her Betty Beavertail. And it wouldn't be until 1985 when they were finally able to find out who exactly she was. She was a 15-year-old runaway whose name was Devonna Nelson. Devonna Nelson had actually run away from Seattle, Washington, and she eventually found her way to Montana. But it was clear that she was also sexually assaulted before she was murdered. And then eventually DNA evidence would link Wayne Nance to her murder. In 1984, Wayne Nance was working as, I guess, a bouncer at a local bar there in Missoula. He was dating a 16-year-old named Marcella Bachman. Apparently, in September of 1984, Wayne and Marcella had announced, we're leaving town, we're moving out of here. Well, three months after they made this announcement is when the body of the then unidentified victim was found. And they would refer, refer to her as the Debbie Deer Creek Jane Doe. She died of three gunshot wounds to her body, but they did not link this body to Marcella Bachman until like decades later. So for a long time, she was just a Jane Doe. It was all the way in 2006 when using familial DNA that Marcella Bachman was identified as that Jane Doe. It would also be when DNA later down the road linked Wayne Nance to her murder. In September of 1985, another body pops up. This is again, another Jane Doe. She was referred to as the Christy Crystal Creek Jane Doe. She had been shot twice in the head. Now, she was initially believed to be of, they had like, uh, you know, pathologists and reconstructionists re, you know, they did her, they did a model of her skull and they initially said that they believed that she was of Asian descent, which will later be found out to not be true, but they didn't know who she was either until decades later. Actually, not too long ago, in 2021, she was identified as Janet Lee Lucas. And she was identified through a, a bunch of you know, crazy intense DNA work that they were finally able to do that and finally put a name to her. Now with her, they can't say for absolute certain because they don't have DNA evidence as of right now that linked Wayne Nance to her, but her body was found in Montana in the same time frame that these other murders occurred, she fit the type, she fit the bill. She was killed essentially the exact same way. And she too had come from a completely different state. And I guess she was known to uh, apparently hitchhike from time to time. And they don't have concrete evidence of it, but they believe that she likely hitchhiked and found her way to Montana where she unfortunately came across the likes of Wayne Nance where he then likely sexually assaulted her and then killed her. But th again, they cannot say for certain that he was responsible for her murder, but they feel confident that he likely is responsible for it. So back on December 12th, 1985, another, now a double homicide would occur. Mike and Teresa Shook, they lived there in Montana and they had three young children. On that December evening, they had dinner with their three kids. It was, they were a very good, happy family. When much later that night, uh, a fire was reported at that house. And when uh, responders arrived, they found two dead bodies inside that house and three children who were thankfully still alive. 
According to the kids, a man was banging on their door earlier that night. Mike opened the door. Um, this man, whoever was there, took a knife and just stabbed Mike Shook right in the chest. This man then accosted Teresa, tied her up, and then raped her in the bedroom where he then stabbed her to death. Then this man just set the house on fire while three kids were still in it alive and he just left. Now, luckily, because the house was so closed up and the windows were closed, it actually created... The fire kind of lasted long enough for people to notice it, but the fire eventually kind of went out on its own because it there just wasn't enough opportunity for it to grow. They didn't have any evidence that Wayne Nance was the person responsible for this back at that time, but it would be later again after his death that dna would link him to the rape of teresa shook and eventually would link him to the murders of both of them wayne nance while all of this was going on was living this as most serial killers tend to be able to do living this very um quiet unassuming life he always came across as very intelligent hard-working incredibly charming he managed to kind of weasel his way into many people's lives just by how charming he was and everyone was you know none the wiser to these evil deeds he was committing over the course of these few years all of these people that he worked with that he uh, had dinners with he would go to the bar with that he had friendly conversations with none of them knew that he was actually this person that they were calling the missoula mauler this brutal serial killer who was raping women and killing them. Some people in his life would say Wayne was a relatively handsome guy and, you know, he was easy on the eyes to some people. I don't see it myself, but hey, to each their own. But that's another easy way for him to have gained access to women. I mean, God knows how many other women he may have attacked, sexually assaulted, that maybe these women who survived didn't report it because, you know, a lot of times they don't. And there may be more murders out there that he may have committed that just DNA evidence isn't linking him to. And it's also incredibly uncommon that a would-be victim of a serial killer flips the script and kills the serial killer. That doesn't happen. So Doug Wells here is really kind of the hero of this entire story. He, even though he was stabbed in his chest, he was able to have enough strength to get up, take his bindings off and get a gun and shoot Wayne Nance while he was attacking his wife and then bashed his skull in. I mean, give the guy a round of applause and a medal, in my opinion. I would say the only downside is that the six victims, at least six victims of Wayne Nance slash the Missoula Mauler, they don't get, their families at least, don't get their day in court. They don't get to see Wayne Nance go through a lengthy trial and be convicted and sit in a prison cell where he lives a miserable life in prison or possibly even sentenced to death where he has to sit there and wait for his death to come. He got off easy in the end. I mean, he got off painfully and brutally, but uh, he got off all the same. I, I just hope that in some way the victim's families can kind of look at this and go, he can't hurt anyone ever again. And he got what he deserved in terms of what he did to his victims. He seemed to get that twice as much. Because like not only was he shot in the side, which I'm sure is very painful, he then had his brains bashed out. Like, that's gotta suck, right? <laughs> So while the six victims of Wayne Nance did not necessarily get the legal justice they should have gotten, in the end, they got a different kind of justice. Deadly justice, if you will. And Doug Wells put an end to all of that, thankfully. And so they ended up getting a different kind of justice that they all very rightfully deserved. But that is it for this case, true crime, Aruni Dooney, Dingleberry Dongs. I hope you found it interesting. As usual, uh, please subscribe if you're into true crime and you're new here. Hi, my name is Fred. No, Mike. My name is Mike. So subscribe here. I promise I'm not entirely crazy, just a little bit. So yeah, subscribe, give this video a like, share the video, whatever you want to do. Also, if you like short form true crime stories, you can follow me over on a couple different TikTok to TikTok TikTok pages that I have. Uh, the links to those pop up here at some point in the beginning and at the end of the video. 
The links are also in the link tree in the description of this video below. Okay, yes. Why am I trying to do Christopher Walken? I can't do him. Oh my God, stop it. Shit. Or oh, it's painful. I'm a hot mess. This is a whole hot mess of the way to end this video. Where was I? Also in the link... Also in the link tree, my merch store. My merch store exists. I sell t-shirts and hoodies and stuff. We ship yonder. Yonder the world, all over the world. It's a place where you actually live. Okay, Mike. So check it out if you want to. Jesus. And then lastly, if there's a case you want me to cover and then at the end become incredibly in unhinged while well, telling. Huh? Anyway. What? Okay. Uh, recommend a case to my email. My email is listed below as well. Um, just send me the name of the case and where it happened and when it happened. I'll add it to my list. The list is now officially over 6,300 names long. I pick those cases that I cover each time at random. Random. Stop it. You got it. So I can't promise you when I'll cover that case, but I will cover it eventually. I understand if you see this and go, wow, this guy is stupid and insane and I don't want to subscribe to him anymore. I get it. I understand. But please stay because this um, this is this is my life. <laughs> anyway, see ya. Bye. Ta-ta for now for the next video, true uh, the true crime story video that I tell uh, probably in a day or so. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Well. Bye. <laughs> <clears throat>